by 10, okay? It's an eight by 10. I brought two in case we had time to do two, but it's an eight by 10, one and a half inch canvas. And I'm gonna set this one aside and we're gonna start with this one. And what I'm gonna start with is, <coughs> excuse me, eight by, oh yeah, the challenge piece is 11 by 14. This is an eight by 10. I'm gonna put a little bit of color on my palette and I know this is, <clears throat> this is uh, dirty, but we're gonna use it anyway because I like to use them to death before I get a new one. So I'm using uh, Hauser Green Light. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that, I think, maybe not, on my canvas. Well, that drives me crazy. Oh, here we go. Green, and I'm gonna use a little bit of white. I'll put the white over here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of, hey Mary, hey Laura, hey Connie, Peg, Tina. Thank you, Tina. This is golden straw, just a yellow. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just, just use a, a kind of a bright uh, grass green, uh, a golden yellow and a white. And we're gonna just do a quick an easy background, okay? No big deal. Not a lot of color because we want the glass to be, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna have to take a sip. Orange soda, my favorite. Um, we're just going to just add a little bit of color to our background just so it's not stark white, okay? So I'm gonna use a little bit of a bigger brush. Let me see what I can find here. This is a good one. Thank you for the sprinkling, uh, friends. So this is like a one inch flat, okay? And I'm using it because it's gonna cover a lot of ground quickly. Hey, Susan. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is so scratchy. I feel fine. I actually feel pretty good. So I've wet my brush and then offloaded uh, the excess water. Let me see if I can get a little more light over here now that it's not uh, blaring into my face. So I am literally just gonna go into my white and I'm going to add a little bit of white to the entire canvas. Not even, I'm not even trying to make sure every square inch is covered. I just wanna have a little bit of a white primer. because the other colors are so grabby and I really want it to be kind of muted. So we're just doing white. Oh, Allie, I love you guys. Aw, spring open house. I hope you guys rock it. Hope you sell all the things. Okay, so it's all covered. So now what I'm gonna do is just go into my yellow just a little bit of yellow right into the wet color and add a little bit of yellow. That might have been a little too much. And we'll come back over the top with some white because that was a little more than I wanted, but we're gonna work with it. That's how paint is. You just get what you get, okay? So I'm gonna add a little bit of white back on top of that, pull it down a little. And then I'm gonna go into my green. See, I notice I left this corner undone. So I'm gonna go into my green. Actually, I'm gonna offload this real quick first. And this is a little darker than I want. So I'm gonna add, I want my flowers to pop. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more white on top. All right. Now I'm gonna go into that green. I got way too much color on my palette. Look at all that green I got. So I'm gonna go into my green and add the green in this corner and blend it up into the yellow. Just start down here, don't start in the middle because you wanna start furthest away from the yellow and then blend it back up towards the yellow so it kinda of creates an ombre faded look. You don't wanna start here and have that harsh green right up against your yellow. All right, so here we go. Now, I'm actually gonna go into my white again and just do that here as well, but we're gonna add some green. Uh, 
So I'm gonna rinse this off. I'm gonna use a different brush. I'm gonna use my liner. Let me find it. Should have should have been pre more prepared. So let me push this up here where you can actually see it. So I think I'm gonna use this uh, liner brush. It is a number six liner, okay? It's kind of pointy. And I'm gonna wet that. And I'm gonna add another color to my palette, okay? So I have, what I have is this bright green. Can you see that? And I'm gonna add some uh, medium green, which is kind of a darker uh, tree leaf green. Hello, North Dakota. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> I'm comical. Okay, so we're gonna add that to the palette as well because we're gonna make some, just some stems, some flower stems, for grass fronds, that kind of thing. And we're gonna, I actually am gonna use two different sizes of uh, liner brush. One's fatter and one's skinnier so that I can make some skinny lines too. I've got, this is a hot mess over here. I need to move some things around so I can make sure I'm in the camera range. Okay. So my water, my napkin, and my sodi. Yes, Sherry, all you have to do is go to the Angel Facebook page and uh, just uh, go in there and that's where the videos are. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my dark green first. It might not be dark enough. I may have to add another green. And I'm just gonna roll my big fat liner brush into the dark green, and I am literally just gonna make strokes with the liner brush and, and uh, create just some fronds, okay? Or some leaves, not leaves, some um, whatever, stems, flower stems. And I'm kind of coming, I'm starting with barely touching. Whoa, can y'all hear that? These people are crazy. I'm barely touching the canvas when I start because I want it to be skinnier up here at the top. And then as I come down, you press down and it gets fatter and fatter and fatter, all right? So that kind of fills up that bottom corner a little bit. So just add, I'm gonna get into this lighter color too. Might add a little white to it. Cause I like a variation of colors. I don't like everything to be all one solid color. So we're gonna come in and we'll do a few of those. I'm just gonna keep going. I think I'm gonna grab a darker green too and see what happens. So we're gonna just fill in. And you know what, don't be afraid to do this. This, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see that I'm not trying to be perfect. I just want to get some of these uh, grassy little fronds on here. I'm gonna grab a darker color. Uh, this is Plantation Pine. It's a darker green just to give it a little more color towards the bottom. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that colors aside so I'll know what I did and I'm gonna use the smaller brush I'm gonna go into that dark green and do the same thing I'm just gonna we'll come up and just add see that's just going right on top of the
Just keep adding until you're happy. And here's what we're gonna do. I am going to We're gonna set this one aside, because we're gonna do two of these. We're gonna set this one aside and let this dry for a few minutes. And while we're doing, while we're letting that dry, we're gonna do another one. So we're gonna do two different uh, flowers, all right? So let's take this one off. We're gonna do the um, background very similar, okay? So I'm gonna use that same brush Hey, Sheila. So we're gonna use the same brush. We're gonna go into the white. And we're gonna cover the whole canvas with white. I know y'all think I'm crazy using white first, but I want the colors to be muted. I don't want them to be really bright and in your face. Want it or have a really soft muted background. And the white helps with that so that the um, yellows and the greens don't grab on to the canvas really hard. Oops, there's some green already. Hang on. So just get the white on. This is just quick and easy. No fanciness about it. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. I'm gonna go into my yellow. Just get a dab of yellow on your brush. And I'm gonna come up here. I may do it backwards, like a twin. So we're gonna do this side this way. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little white in there, kind of like I did with the other one. Oh Lord, hang on, make the mess. Let's see if I can get some of that green off. I didn't want that. Now we'll do the green. <laughs> See how easy, easy it is to make a boo-boo and then to fix it? No big deal whatsoever. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, I'm gonna offload. <laughs> I know, they just get smooshed together and then you're like, oopsie. All right, I'm gonna go in with this lighter green, which is the Hauser Green Light. And remember to start at furthest away from the yellow so that it's darker here and then it's lighter as you go into the yellow because if you start with the dark right up against the yellow, you're gonna have a hard time blending that out. So make sure you start furthest away. Get a smidgy more so that you can blend easy into <laughs> blend easy into your um, yellow, okay? So, I just kind of pulled my brush through this wet paint to make some, like, faux fronds. <laughs> um, and I kind of like the way that looks. Can you see what I did there? That's kind of fun and interesting. I'm going to leave. So, now we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add our... We're gonna add our leaves or grass or stems or whatever we wanna call them. So I'm using the darker color first, I'm trying to make sure you can see. I'm gonna go into the darker color first this time. And we're just going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna bring very lightly. And then as I get towards the bottom, 
I'm gonna press down a little more. So that makes it really skinny at the top and then it gets fatter as you go down. Okay, I'll show you one more time. And then we're just gonna keep it going. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So you're gonna start very lightly at the top, just barely touching. And as you move down, you're gonna press. You can even see how I'm twisting my um, paintbrush as well. You can twist it and just bring it down to make it fatter. So we're just gonna keep on doing that. I'm gonna go into the lighter green. They kind of all look the same when, you, when you're putting them on the canvas, don't they? <laughs> they don't look lighter. And notice how I'm crossing over myself too. So you're not just gonna do a line, a line, a line, a line. You want them to intermix and cross over each other. All right, hang on. So I'm just gonna keep making a few. I'm just going in and out of different colors. I want to fill in. So let's see how this looks. Let's put them together. <clears throat> see if we need to make any adjustments. They're not bad together. This one's a little more yellow, but I think that's okay. So I'm going to just add a few little things. like how I did that? <laughs> I crossed over, didn't I? I'm gonna do it over here too. Look at there. All right, let's see. Now I'm just futzing. Just futzing. Okay, we're gonna stop and we're going to uh, look at our glass. Okay, so I'm done. That's all it is to it. So we have two pieces now. They're kind of interconnected. And now we're gonna talk flowers. So what I've done, I'm gonna put these back. Or I'll get them mixed up. So what I have done is make flowers ahead of time. We taught how to make these flowers in the pre-made flowers inside the Shattered Circle. So if you're interested, we'd love for you to join us next month or this month when we reopen. But I think we're going to use some of these to um, decorate our cute little... I'm going to do this one first. We're going to use some of these flowers we have... Like, I'm gonna show you what we have. We have like little mini yellow flowers. We have some blue. We have just some pre-made um, little glass colored flowers. We have um, all kinds of pretties here. We have blues. And we have different color blues, all this stuff. And we're gonna use some of that, and then I'm actually gonna use some cobalt reflective to kind of add in like little flower buds. And we also have just some yellow glass and just some green glass. So I'm basically just gonna play, okay? I'm gonna play and see where I want things, and then we will resin. 
Not terribly crazy about this flower for this project because I think that, oops, I think that both of these kind of look like poinsettias. So I'm gonna save these for end of the year when we are doing Christmas stuff and we'll use those then. But I am going to also have, uh, I had a tiny little um, a candle vase that I cut into little snippets with my wheeled nippers. We may use some of this as well. So um, let's just play. Let's just see what we have. And I think I'm gonna use one each of these larger flowers on our pieces. And then we'll add in some of the, look how pretty that one is too. We'll add in some of the others. So I'm just going to just kind of put this like at the end of one of the little stems. And we'll do the same with this one and see how this one even has a cute little leaf. So I'm gonna set these up here until we get decided about everything. All right, let me see. Let me pull this down just a smidge. And can you see everything? Can you see what you need to see there? Yeah. So I made these, Lucy. We teach this technique inside the Shattered Circle, but basically it's just shards of glass that we put a little bit of resin on and uh, to create our own pre-made flowers. And I use, like when I over pour resin, I use the, the uh, leftover to make the flowers um, just as I'm going. So I'm gonna actually add this one kind of in the same place. And then we're just gonna start filling in with some pretties. I love this one. Gotta peel some of that resin off. Did I get resin on, or water on my boobsies? So I'm just gonna start um, adding in flowers where I want them. This one's kind of small, so we're gonna throw him in over here. And maybe a, I love this one, it's really colorful. So we're gonna put it right there. And uh, let's see. I love this bright, 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 bright yellow. We're gonna add that one over here. So I'm just gonna continue, I smeared that a little bit. I'm gonna continue adding flowers to my liking. Let me try to correct that. All right, so we'll put one like low in, like right here. I've got some little teeny tiny blue ones. Look at this little baby. That's a little baby blue. So I'm gonna add him like right here and we'll put, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Y'all know I like op, uh, odd numbers. So maybe put him like right here. And I don't like anything lining up this way or this way, okay? So this one's kind of lined up with that one, so that's gonna drive me crazy. So I'm just gonna scoot it over a smidge. Nothing's lined up perfectly. That's how I like it. So we'll put another yellow one. Let me see if I can find a baby. I have these clear ones too, but I don't think they're gonna show up very well on here unless I do one further out. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do this little clear one, or this yellow one, down here like right here, and one, two, three, four. We gotta have a fifth. So we're gonna cover that little boo-boo I made right there. And now I'm going to use, I'm gonna set my little pre-made flower bin aside, <laughs> and I'm gonna add in some other things, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna start with is just a little bit, um, Wendy, 
um, you probably either, one of a couple of things, you either did not mix your, or uh, measure your resin properly. Depending on the resin, did you use art resin? First question. If you did, you have to have exact measurement. You have to have like one ounce of resin, one ounce of hardener. If you get that off a little bit, it's gonna cause it to stay sticky. And <clears throat> if you don't mix it properly and scrape the sides and mix it really well for three minutes and you have some unmixed resin in your cup, that could cause stickiness as well. The good news is if they have been sitting for a, a day and they're still sticky, you can just resin back over the top of it. Okay, you don't have, it's not a lost cause. Just get you some resin and resin right back over the top. Make sure you are measuring properly and make sure you are mixing really well for three minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna add just a handful of green on each one, not too much. I don't wanna cover everything up, but just a handful of the green. On each one. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's bringing this one down a little. We get a little bit more. I'm just gonna keep playing until I like it. So this is really, literally just a handful. Voila, no big deal. Don't have to be perfect, just make it. Am I locked up? Can you see me? Am I good? Let me scoot these back in. Okay, so now I'm gonna take just a couple of these. Um, this is cobalt reflective. I'm not gonna use much, but I'm just gonna take a couple of these and just add some little flower buds, okay? So I'm gonna add like one here, one here, so just randomly add in a few little flower buds. And you could use whatever color glass you wanted. It doesn't have to be this color. All right. I want a, another little handful of green. Go girl, go Catherine. All right, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna just add a few little pieces that are like little flower buds. I wanna kind of use some of the bigger pieces. So we'll just throw a couple in. One, two, three, four, five. I know I'm a weirdo. It's like I'm the rain man when it comes to this. I have to have odd numbers. I don't know why. It's just who I am. <laughs> is just who I am, one, two, three, four, five. All right, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be done. Let's let's take a look and see, and guess what we're gonna add. You, anybody wanna guess what the last thing we're gonna add? Oh, la, 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 bubbles. I love bubbles, and I like pretty much adding them to everything. I don't know why, I'm obsessed with them. Got a little bit of debris going here. Let me brush that off. Isn't this super cute? So I'm just going to get a few in my hand and I like it to be super random. So I'm just gonna drop them. And wherever they land, most of the time they just land, okay? I'm gonna, too many of them landed right there, but. And we'll do the same over here. We'll get a few more. People outside are having a potty. 
All right. So there we are. Get off my finger. Voila. What do you think? Let's look at these close up. Let me show you this one. Look how stinking cute. Let me see if I can turn it sideways. You can kind of see the whole thing. So we added bubbles. We added a few little cobalt pieces. All the uh, pre-made flowers. Paula, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby or you can buy them from my website, artshattered.com. Uh, I sell them as well because I, I use a lot. So, and here's this one. The bubbles kind of are like make or break it. I might add a few more. I'm obsessed with the bubbles. Yeah, you can buy them from me. Or if you have a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels close to you, most of the time they have them as well. So never trying to force you to buy something from me. Not how I roll. All right, that's enough. Walk away. All right, so guess what we're ready for? I'm gonna put this aside. And I am going to get ready to mix some resin. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so you can see both of these. I need to grab, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do two or not, so I need to grab some more blocks for, to elevate. And a cup to mix in. Because I think I'm gonna go ahead and make, um, I think I can do this with an ounce each. So I'm gonna make two ounces. So I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna pour them into my baby cups and then mix in a separate cup, okay? So because my cups, you can hardly see the uh, resin or the mark lines, I'm gonna mark it with my pen so I don't mess up. So there is one fluid ounce and then here, is one fluid out. So I'll pour an ounce and an ounce, and I think that'll cover both of these lovelies. Thank you, Trish. I'm gonna have a sip. My throat's all scratchy. Ah. Okay, gloves. And we use art resin in this house. Uh, it is non-hazmat, non-VOC, non-COV, no BPAs. It has the highest rating for non-yellowing. All resin will amber. But this one lasts longer than any resin on the market. So this is what we're going to use to resin our piece. And before we get started, I'm going to elevate. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take two blocks. Thank you, Paula. I agree with that 100%. I agree with those terms. I shop small too. So I'm going to elevate our canvases so that if we have any drippage, it won't glue our uh, pro our thing down to our table. The I got the uh, pre-marked cups, Lisa, on Amazon. So they're just like uh, little mini measuring cups, like a medicine cup. And you can get those on Amazon. So I'm gonna scooch. Somebody knocked my flower off, hang on. I'm gonna put this one on here. Get them elevated. And I'll put this back somewhere, wherever it was. And I wanna make sure you can see them both. Can you see? Let me scoot them a little closer together. These are so super cute. Okay, so I'm gonna mix resin. So it's two parts, equal parts, measure, not weigh. I gotta turn that around so I can do it. So I'm gonna start with the hardener and I'm gonna do one ounce of hardener. Thank you, Catherine. One ounce of hardener in one cup. So you wanna do this really slow though because it kinda is like molasses, it grows on you. So, you know, if you pour right up to the line and then stop pouring, it's gonna get bigger and bigger. So, once you get close to the line, you wanna slow down a smidge and let it grow. And 
and that is good. That's one ounce. One ounce of hardener. So I'm push that back to the back. And in this cup, we're gonna do one ounce of resin, okay? Same thing. You're gonna pour slow because you don't want it to sneak up on you. So when it gets kind of close to that line or your measure line, you wanna stop and let it grow for a minute so that you make sure you have equal amounts because it will continue to move for a minute or so. I think I need one drop. So there, now we have one ounce and one ounce, one ounce hardener, one ounce resin, and I'm actually, I'm gonna pour it in a different cup. You grab a cup. So this is just a plastic uh, from the dollar store, you know, those little cheap plastic cups. So I am going to just dump, if I'm a stick, dump in the cup. Make sure you get as much as you can. That way your measurement is proper. If you don't scrape up out all the goodies in one of the cups, then you're gonna have a mismeasurement. Then you'll be sad. Okay, so get all you can out of that cup. We'll set this aside. Then I'm gonna do this one. So we're gonna scrape out all we can out of this cup too. Get all the juice. All the juices. All right. Try one more time just to make sure, scrape that bottom. Get all the goodness. All right, we'll set that aside. All right. Yes, you can. I actually bought some and uh, left them at my house, so um, I wasn't able to uh, use those today. But yes, and they come in a variety of sizes, so you can just let it dry, and then the, it's a really flexible cup, so you can flip it inside out and just peel that resin right out. I'm going to start using those as soon as I remember to bring them to the studio. Okay, so uh, Catherine, are we ready? So what you're gonna do now is stir. You're not gonna beat it to death. You're not gonna whip it. You're gonna slowly stir and mix those two parts together. Scrape your sides, scrape the bottom. And I say scrape for this reason. Have you ever like poured a box cake into a, pan, into a bowl? Then you add your eggs and oil or whatever and you stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it, and you think you've got it all mixed well, and then when you start to dump it in the pan, there's always like one little corner of the bowl where the dry mix is still not mixed in. That's why we do this. You wanna scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, keep stirring, and we're gonna do this for three minutes. Uh, Sue, I'm not sure if they're hard to hold because I haven't used one yet. I just bought them and uh, I haven't used it yet because I keep forgetting they're at my house. So yeah, so we're going to do this for three minutes very slowly. If you, if you stir it too fast, you're going to incorporate a lot of air into the mix, which creates bubbles, which is not good. You don't want to have a lot of bubbles because we're going to use um, a torch. You can use a blowtorch, a kitchen torch, not a blowtorch, a uh, propane torch, a creme brulee torch, a heat gun, anything like that that produces heat and air to pop those bubbles. But the least amount of bubbles you have to start with, the easier it's going to be. Yay, Charlene says she loves hers. Hey, Judy. So we're slowly stirring, and we're gonna do it the entire three minutes. Don't cheat yourself, or you're gonna end up with a sticky art piece, and then you're gonna be sad, and we don't want you to be sad, okay? 
No sadness here. No sadness on Saturdays. Yeah, you wipe your, Catherine says she wipes her cups out with paper towel. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let somebody else answer that question, Debbie, because I don't know. I didn't know. What I do know is I'm hungry. I have not eaten lunch, and my belly, I don't know if y'all can hear that thunder in my stomach, but my belly is not happy with me at all. Hey Susan, hey Samantha, hey Rajetta, hello Dorothy and Cindy Pugh. How are you? If you missed it, if you missed how we created this, uh, you can come back and watch the replay. It'll be right here on this page. You can come back and watch it at your convenience. Thanks, Diane. Aren't they cute? Just cute as they can be. I've got to make a lot of smalls in the next couple weeks for my new little store because I have a lot of big pieces of art. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Sher Sherry. Hey, Samantha Gibbons. Um, I've got to make a lot of small, so we're just gonna make them together. If y'all are interested, make sure you like my page. Make sure you tell your friends, and you know how to do that, right? You know how to tell your friends that we're here, uh, and come back often and watch us make art, because I'm gonna be a busy girl in the next couple weeks making a lot of smalls for our, uh, thank you, Catherine, for our opening. And we haven't set a date yet, so don't ask, because I don't know. Can't get my life together. So I'm gonna start over here, and I'm gonna start in the corner of this glass, and I'm just gonna work myself up covering all these glass pieces, all right? So let's get going. So I'm gonna use my stick to just drizzle lightly over the glass. And I like to go kind of in, you know, in one direction, like from bottom to top, or this, for, for this, I'm kind of going to go in a diagonal. That way I know what I've resined and what I haven't, because sometimes it gets confusing and you may miss a spot, and you don't want that to happen either. You want to make sure you're good and covered. Especially when you have a lot of little bits. This is a lot of little bets. Thank you. Happy Easter to all of you. I hope you're able to spend some time with people you love this Easter. I know that last year on Easter, you know, for the first time in my life, I did not get to see my mom for Easter. I don't think, I don't remember if we did or not. We may have. We may have uh, looked each other at each other through the window. I'm pretty sure. I, pretty sure I didn't see her. Cause she's 81. She's an old bitty. Love that woman to pieces. But yeah, it was you know crazy COVID. But I hope that you all get to see somebody you love tomorrow. Yeah, no sad missing spots. We're almost there on this one, so I'm gonna cover this piece really well. Make sure I don't get in, miss any parts. I may not have mixed enough. I may be in troubles. I may have to make more. Hopefully not. All right, now I'm gonna, before I uh, spread this or add more, I'm gonna come over and do um, the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna start, oops, get up there. I'm gonna start the same way. I'm gonna start at the bottom where my glass is and just work my way up. <clears throat> Just 
Just adding a little bit at a time. You don't want to flood your canvas because then you end up overusing the resin. And resin's not cheap, guys. Y'all know that. If you're using resin, you know it's not cheap, so you don't want to waste. And that's one of the things we teach big time inside the Shattered Circle is how to resin your art pieces without using too much resin and creating a lot of resin waste. Because we don't, we want you to save money. We don't want you to be broke. We might have enough. We might. I'm gonna have to scoot that little piece over a little. All right, we're getting low. How low can we go? I wanna make sure I get lots of resin on this flower, especially where it's touching the canvas, because that's gonna help secure it to our canvas. Who's out there dying Easter eggs? It has been a lot. My baby is will be 30 this year, so I don't get the I don't get to die Easter. I guess I could die them if I wanted to, but they don't Easter egg hunt anymore. My little babies. All right, so all the glass is covered. So what I'm going to do is kind of scrape out any remaining resin. I'm going to put a little bit on this one. And I'm gonna come over here and put some on this one and pray that it's enough. Let's get it out of there. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, Charlene is having a problem when resining. It looks like everything is covered, no skippies. I flood my canvas, I try to use less, but after I did my cross with glass, I had a big skippy at one side. Oh, that sucks, Charlene, and I'm sorry that happened. Uh, when you are done with the resin process, make sure that you take a minute or two to look at your canvas in a couple of different angles. Like, look at it, like get your head kind of close and look at it from a couple of different directions because uh, if you miss a spot, you'll be able to tell, okay? You'll be able to see that it's kind of matte and not wet and shiny looking. So try that. Well, oh, there's a lot of resin on this. So I should be good. So try that. That's the only thing I can think of, especially if you're using a lot of resin is that you're, you're just missing a spot or two. So if you check yourself before you walk away and just make sure, uh, a couple of the students will even like shine a flashlight across it because it'll hit those matte spots and you'll be able to see that as well. So I know you don't wanna re-resin, but ugh. If it's a big spot, you probably need to. If it's a small spot, uh, I, you know, you'll have to make that determination, but if it's a small little baby spot, I probably wouldn't do it. I'm notorious for that. I'm like, nope. I don't strive for perfect resin. I mean, if it's a big, ugly miss, then okay, but if it's not, if it's just a little baby hole, just leave it. Nothing is perfect. All right, I think I got it all. There's a lot of resin on this piece. Hang on, I'm gonna pick this flower up and move some of this resin around underneath because it's got a ton in case I don't have enough for my other one. Let me put it back down. All right, all right, so let's go over here. I think this one's gonna have plenty. 
I'm just pulling it and covering any uh, blank spot I missed. If this is your first time watching, that's what I'm doing. Covering any skippies with this little silicone brush. Just making sure like in between all these little glass bits, making sure it's nice and covered. And we'll scrape up some of this because that's excessive. Put it right there. We got excessive on that one. All right, I'm just gonna keep moving it around. Filling in any holes, any bare spots. There's a lot of resin here too. Can y'all hear the traffic outside my store? It's so loud. So just keep pushing and pulling it around till you don't see any more bare spots from the resin. I know I moved my flower, but I'm gonna move it back, I promise. Just push it back over there. All right, I'm gonna pick this big one up and make sure there's resin underneath so it's really secure. Put it back down. All right, so now what I like to do, once I'm done with the resin, I'm gonna look, uh-uh, hang on. Uh, I'm gonna look at my canvas from an angle. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of dip, dip my head down and I see right here I have a naked spot, okay? Because it's not shiny and wet looking, so you can really tell. So I'm gonna look across. Everything else looks pretty good. Let the light shine on it at a different angle. So now we'll do the same to this one. And we'll look at it across and I see a naked spot right here. And we'll push that in. See a naked spot right here, and three naked spots right here. So I'm just moving that resin around to get that spot. And otherwise, it looks really good. Now I am gonna set this right here for one second, and I'm gonna grab a baby wipe, or uh, one of our, one of Gina's <clears throat> alcohol wipes to clean my brush. So I'm gonna clean the resin off of this so that it is good to go next time. And then I'm gonna to torch. So I'm gonna to set this down. We'll put that in there. And I'm gonna take these off. Thank you, Charlene. And I use a big old torch because I do a lot of big art, but don't feel like you need to use something this crazy, okay? You can get like a small creme brulee torch or you can use a heat gun or some other form of heat to pop the bubbles in your canvas. You don't have, using one of these is not required, okay? So I'm just gonna run across, keeping the heat or keeping, did y'all see that? Hang on, hang on one second. Started a fire. <laughs> uh, keep, you wanna keep the flame off your piece five, five or six inches and you don't wanna hold the fire on your canvas in one spot, okay? You wanna keep moving constantly. You see that my arm is never stopping, never stop, okay? And it just takes a few seconds and voila, what is that? Okay, look, look what I did. Look what I did, guys. I burned my napkin. See, I'm a bad girl. And I should have known to move that napkin. Now I see a little piece of debris, it might be from the burned napkin, right here. So I'm gonna kinda check to make sure I don't have any garbage in my piece. 
So I see a couple pieces. So you can use a toothpick for this. There it is. Now I don't see anything else. Let's see. Checking for ickies. Don't see anything. So we are done. So I want to show these to you close up so you can see how pretty they are. So let's see if we can get this one. Look how pretty. Is that not gorgeous? So that's our lefty. And then we have this one. Check out that flower and see how the bubbles just kind of make the different, all the difference in the world.